great to be here with you. Uh, I'm Muzzy Jurgensen, uh, and as you heard, I head up sustainability for Microsoft in the UK. And I was reflecting this week as I uh, had the honor of um, welcoming our graduate uh, cohort to Microsoft this year. And I was trying to think about what are the things that have led me here and to Microsoft. And there are three things, really, that I've, uh, over my career and, and over the last 20 years in the tech industry that have led me here. The first is a huge passion around people, particularly understanding how people operate and what that means when change comes and how people adapt to change and how we can do that in a better way. The second is finding solutions to complex problems, be that within businesses, within um, you know, wider communities or the world at large, and how technology can play a part in accelerating some of the solutions that we need to find uh, out there. And the third, then, is, is the potential that we have and in seeing the innovation that sits across organizations within individuals, the potential that can be unlocked, and what that can do when we all collaborate together to come and find the things that we need to do um, across the world. And so that's what's led me to where I am and to Microsoft, who are committed to harnessing the power of technology to help everyone everywhere have a more sustainable future. And I can tell you that's built on Microsoft's mission, which is to empower every person and every organization in the world to achieve more. Uh, and so everything that Microsoft does in terms of op how we operate and, and the culture that we build is focused around that. And as you can see, Satya, who's our CEO, is, is the focus for our purpose is to find profitable solutions to the problems of people and planet. And as I say, that's embedded into everything we do and it really drives us uh, to see how we can be part of the solution of the, of the, loop, of the climate crisis that we see. Uh, and with the ambition that, uh, which I'll take you through, that we've got, but with the view that companies who can do more should do more, and so with the focus that Microsoft have across the world and the resources and the innovation, uh, we're really trying to lead the way uh, on what can be done. And so our, our ambitions really stem across four key areas. Um, and the first is that we want to be carbon negative by 2030. Now that means that we'll take out more carbon than we emit. Um, and we're actually carbon neutral already. We have been for the last 10 years. But we want to go further still. So we've also said that we want to take out all the carbon that we've ever emitted since we were founded in 1975. We've also said we'll be water positive and zero waste by 2050. Uh, and we, we know that the impact of a rising climate is the, the devastating impact it has on ecosystems and biodiversity, the effects of which we're seeing today. So we're putting a lot of uh, focus into uh, protecting more land than we use and building what I think is really cool, which is the world's planetary computer, which is this supercomputer focused on sharing, gathering the data uh, from an open source perspective to think about how we can uh, be tracking and managing and making better decisions around uh, our ecosystems and the biodiversity to help protect that. And um, because we haven't found all the solutions of the world, uh, Microsoft, we haven't got all of the answers yet, we are investing uh, over a billion dollars into our climate innovation fund uh, over the next four years. And that's really there to help open up the markets that we all need in terms of this emerging technology that's coming out and the technology that's there to help that to grow uh, and get bigger so that it's there not only for Microsoft's ambitions around what we want to do, but for uh, everybody else who needs to take advantage of that, particularly at the moment around things like carbon capture and, and storage. And every year we publish where we are on our journey. Uh, we tell you where we are, uh, what we've achieved, um, you know, where we've had successes, where we've had our learnings. And um, you can read about that in our, our sustainability report, the most recent one that came out. And you can see the progress that we've had across um, you know, the last 10 years and, and where we are uh, in terms of some of the milestones that, that we're, we're focused into. And last year, we, uh, from, from, our, from our report, you will see we emitted 14 million tonnes of carbon. 
Uh, and across our scope one and two, we actually reduced by 17% uh, from where we were. But our scope three, which is our biggest um, chunk of, of the emissions, uh, nearly 97%, um, was we, we actually increased. Now, the reason why we increased was last year was a pandemic year. And so there was a huge requirement uh, f uh, from consumers, everybody at home on things like laptops, everybody's working from home with teams, a uh, big, big requirement for, for gaming and things like Xboxes. So the back end compute that's required to drive all of that meant that we had to build more data centers, which uh, meant that our scope three went up. So we are working through how this juxtaposition of working in a, in a growing business, as I'm sure a lot of businesses are, uh, and, and how do we grow and reduce uh, as we go. But we've had some successes, as you can see, see here. And one of the things that we want to do is be very open and transparent uh, to share some of these things so that others can take learnings from them as well and, and we can learn from others. But you can see there that we've um, uh, we, we removed 2.5 uh, million metric tons uh, of carbon. We've introduced our circular centers, which is about how can we reuse some of the parts that, that sit across the, the, the value chain that sit within our operations that we can reuse again. Uh, we've got four of our data centers are zero waste. Um, and you know, there's more to do and more to go, which we're really focused on and ensuring that we're aligning that across every part of our operations is critical to how we work. So, how have we done it? What are some of the key principles that, that we look at when we think about our four key areas that we're focused to? The first is really looking at our operations uh, and ensuring that at every single function across the business, we are driving as much efficiency as we can. We introduced something called our carbon fee um, a few years ago, which is it's holding uh, our businesses to account across um, in where they are uh, on their own journeys. And, and also it means that we can, we can see the visibility of, of who's being successful and who needs to catch up. And we can go and reinvest uh, that uh, fee that we, we apply to those that um, aren't hitting their targets back into uh, areas in the business or out into the market. So that means that you know, we can hold the business accountable and encourage those um, to, to keep up with where they need to be. We look at everything from our products and services right the way from when they're designed all the way through the life cycle, how they get out um, into the supply chain, how they then get to our customers, and everything from um, you know, how the packaging is, um, how, uh, what the, what the, how, how things can be repaired and replaced, and looking at um, you know, what, what that means when customers have it themselves or some of the services that, that they'll be uh, using from Microsoft. We're also helping our customers and our partners to think about how they can uh, be more sustainable as well. And that's about helping people on, on this journey that we're all on to understand the impacts that they're making. Um, a lot of our suppliers, we've got 87% of our suppliers now signed up to our um, supplier code of conduct. And that means that we require uh, them to declare where they are on their carbon journey, but also to commit to reducing that as well. And again, that means that we can uh, keep a track on what's happening across our supply chain and bring people, uh, our suppliers and our, our businesses and partners that we work with on the journey with us. And then we spend a lot of time around policy where we can have influence across the regions of the world um, for where, where things need to accelerate uh, in terms of things like regulation and, and, and dealing with government. But right at the heart there, you can see uh, our, our employees. And they drive everything that we do. We've got a huge purpose-driven culture, which means that we attract people and we have people in the business who really care about the impact that they have and that, that Microsoft have in the world in terms of driving these things. And one of the things that I think about when I'm uh, in my role here in the UK is how I can make sustainability part of everyone's role. So it's not just something that I'm worrying about, the, the sustain sustainability team or somebody with sustainability and their job title is worrying about. It's something that everybody can have an impact in. So all of the elements around driving that culture um, is critical and, and we've been successful at doing. There are three things that Microsoft uh, want to get behind uh, when we think about some of the other areas across the globe when it comes to the net zero discussion. Uh, and we've put a lot of uh, focus into. The first is around the meaning of net zero. 
And um, if we're all defining it in a slightly different way, it's going to be very hard to track the combined progress that we're making to reduce it. So Microsoft's uh, definition is that we reduce deeply and durably remove carbon from the environment. Not offset, but remove by nature-based solutions or technology solutions that will really help um, to ensure that we are doing everything that we can. The second is around the measurement, which again, if we're all defining it in a different way, we're all measuring it in a slightly different way, it's very hard again to track and see the progress. And we've um, led the way in seeking the solution to this by building a common data model that everybody can use uh, to be able to measure uh, the impacts that we have. And, and we've just launched that, went live in the summer with our uh, Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability, which addresses um, that issue. And as I said, we're spending a lot of time focusing on helping to open up the markets uh, that will support net zero by investing in those businesses and helping to amplify uh, to, to ensure that they've got the room to go and grow and, and help with the demand that is out there in the market uh, for all of the requirements um, that we're going to see and some of the solutions that haven't yet been been found. So what does that mean in the UK? So. Uh, I spend a lot of time out with our customers every week, uh, speaking to a lot of them. We, we commissioned a study recently that shows uh, more than 50% of UK businesses aren't on track at the moment to hit their net zero goals by 2050. And we know that there's about 64%, um, only 64% of business leaders have got um, you know, their sustainability strategy embedded into the overall uh, business strategy when it comes to reduction of carbon. You can see some of the stats there in terms of what that means from a tracking perspective and keeping accountability of what's going on. And so a lot of uh, businesses are either at the very beginning of the journey or trying to navigate their way through the requirements they have from regulation, but also to do business in a better way. And there's two reasons, I think, why people are, are still trying to, to mobilize around what that looks like. The first is the skills in the market. And we know that uh, there aren't enough skills yet uh, that are there to help with these green and blue uh, economies that we're looking at and to help drive some of the sustainability um, uh, agendas within, within businesses. Uh, we know in LinkedIn, LinkedIn is, is part of Microsoft, that the top 10 jobs uh, advertised for in the UK today, eight of those are technology roles. Uh, and we know that because of the huge um, uh, war on talent that there is within the technology market for people to come and help with the digital transformation that businesses are going Going through, but we'll very quickly see that those roles are going to be coming up with the sustainability roles and those who've got the skills to be able to drive change within organisations. So I think that's the first is around the skills. And the second is um, that a lot of organisations are struggling to think about what they do when it comes to technology to the, with their data. So uh, a lot of you know, common things that, that um, you know, when I'm talking to customers that they're struggling with is that with, when we look at it through the technology lens, there's slow manual processes, there's siloed data sitting everywhere, it's really hard to get hold of it, it might not be dynamic, so how are we ever going to possibly see what we're doing if we can't get hold of it? Uh, and if we can't do it internally, how are we going to require our supply chain and look at that across the value chain? As well as then not necessarily having the links into the finance to think about how these um, long-term investments are made to, to, for the good of the business. So these are, these are common challenges that we know um, organ organizations face and I speak to customers about regularly. Now, there isn't one silver bullet, don't get me wrong, to, to, to go and fix all of these things, but technology plays a huge part in being able to accelerate a lot of the areas that um, we talk about here when we look at to finding solutions. And when we are talking to our customers, there's, there's, uh, when people are, are at the beginning or have started, there's sort of five key areas that they uh, are looking at. We call them the five R's. Um, most people are thinking about starting around the recording and reporting piece, which is really driven by this requirement for compliance. And we think if we can get that element right, if we can get the, the data in, into, the, into the position that means that uh, we can have the visibility and the transparency about it, then we can then move into what that means for the decisions we need to make around the reducing, replacing, removing elements, carbon, etc., across the business. And then what that means in terms of some of the uh, areas that, that projects and, and 
areas to focus on within the business we can see on the right, which we can look at, um, again, fo focusing into that from a measurement perspective, uh, then seeing how you can apply that into some of the common use cases that be can be used across the business, and then into what that means across the industry and where big decisions can be made about building out collaboration or innovation across the industry. And that, what that means is, uh, as, as we were working with customers, is, is really looking at putting these things on, on three horizons. So trying to chunk it up and, and thinking about what we can deal with. Now, these can be done concurrently or simultaneously, not, not necessarily um, you know, in, in, in order, but to be thinking about it in three broad ways. So the first is, what do we need to do today, but do it better? What are the things that we need to do today, but do that differently? Uh, and then on, on the third horizon is, is complete transformation of, bus of the business. So how can we be operating in a very different way? How can we look at new routes to market? How can we be collaborating better? And so trying to break it down into these three things means that in a practical way, you can look at all of the different areas of, of focus across the business that needs to be thought about. So you can see the example here, um, you know, the, the first focus is to try and integrate and standardize sustainability data to be able to help automate and drive a lot of the ESG reporting. Then thinking about, you know, what does that mean from an operational perspective? So one of the quick wins might be that we move everything out of the data, our on-premise data center into the cloud. And we know that, because um, we have the, the stats that show, you know, doing something like that on the Microsoft Azure cloud can be up to 93% more efficient from an, uh, uh, an energy carbon perspective than doing it yourself. So there's some of the quick wins. That then enables the workforce to, to be more uh, work more rem remotely. Then we get into some of the areas around innovation. What are, what are the things that we need to be thinking about a bit further down the line? Uh, to uh, try and help improve what we see across things like our supply chain uh, and out with our partners. And then you can see on the, on the, on the third is, is around what that means to completely transform the business, look at new ways of working, um, maybe opening up new business models, new routes to market, what have you. But it makes it, we will, we will when we're working with customers, trying to think about it in very practical terms about what are the areas that need to be thought about and how can we then join that up into the overall strategy uh, of the direction that business needs to go. Uh, in summary, there are some key things uh, that Microsoft have, have built to help our customers to get onto this journey or wherever they are to be able to help innovate, to collaborate uh, and help uh, accelerate a lot of the solutions that need to be find, uh, found in order to drive uh, sustainability across our globe as we need to. So wherever you are on the journey, um, there's always somewhere to start. I know a lot of the, the people at the beginning can be overwhelming to think about where, where we get going, but there's always an area to, to think about, and Microsoft are uh, behind in leading the way on being uh, behind businesses on leading the way to be able to uh, ensure that we all live in a more sustainable world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Muzzy. Uh, we are going to take some questions from the audience as well. If you want to throw a hand up and we can bring a microphone over to you. Uh, if we could do that, I'll just take some questions first, though. Uh, you talked there about um, you know, making a start. So creating and delivering on a net zero strategy is an unknown for most businesses. So uh, how would you suggest a company get started on that journey? So, as I said, uh, depending on where, where people are, uh, a lot of um, customers that I'm talking to sort of go, oh, it's it's quite overwhelming. We've got all of these things we need to do and we're in this, we're trying to grow and trying to keep the business on track. I would say there are some principles that, that are important. Um, one is to ensure that sustainability is embedded into the overall strategy of the business and that's critical and it's not just a side thing that gets wheeled in when we need to talk about sustainability. Um, that sustainability is therefore at the top table around decisions that are being made. There's a good alignment with finance and the investments that need to be made in, uh, in terms of being thinking about that. Seeing sustainability as an opportunity for growth in a business and part of the overall growth strategy because we know that um, businesses who get on with this and, and, and consumers actually demanding that the brands and the businesses that they're working with have got sustainability embedded into that. So there's lots of elements to, to think about. Um, but you know, for, for businesses who are starting, it's about you know 
thinking, as I said, around where, how do we, how do we uh, think about our data. Is there a problem that's really causing an issue that we can start with? Uh, and you know, how do we innovate around that, that that can then lead into other areas? But it's got to be embedded all the way through in terms of how uh, business operates and as, as a culture as well, so that you bring your employees with you and you've got um, you know, that, that passion harnessed to uh, focus on good. Okay, and it's great to see big businesses like Microsoft, um, you know, making a difference. But does this also work for smaller organisations? You know, how can they make an impact when their reach and budgets are so much smaller? Yeah, I think small organisations got great opportunity because uh, you can embed sustainability from the very beginning, so that it's 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 part of business as usual, and and there then uh, as businesses grow. But I think the same principles apply in terms of thinking about it as core to the growth and. Uh, needing to, to think about how it's aligned across every single area and the requirements for things like supply chains and suppliers and partners and who's working, you know, you're setting, setting the expectation around how you want to operate so then it's easier as you set that to be able to go and gather the data that you need to report on. Okay, thank you. And uh, yeah, the question from the floor, if you just state your name and where you're from, please. Hi, this is Sunil here. I'm a VP Vice President at CGI. Uh, uh, amazing presentation, Musi. Very impressed with the $1 billion investment you're making. Uh, I'm a bit shocked on the survey report where you mentioned only 64% of the business leaders have carbon emissions reduction as part of the sustainability strategy. Because typically my experience is even if business leaders don't really focus on carbon cutting, after having spent one hour with me, normally they would all always have that in their strategy. Do you, something, do you see something differently here or why is this number of 64%? Well, I, look, I think we, we're, we're, I mean, we're coming up to the second COP, aren't we? But that's gone very quickly. It's only recent, you know, last year that we had COP26 and everyone came out with huge ambitions around you know, commitments and what we're going to do. So we can see that some businesses are, are, are taking advantage of that and have got underway. But there's still a huge swathe uh, out there who are you know, struggling to think about starting. Uh, and, and, you know, especially in the, in the environment that we are here in the UK with, uh, you know, coming out of the back of COVID, energy crisis, cost of living crisis, you know, the war in Ukraine, um, I think a lot of that has, has clouded some of the ambitions and, and commitments that businesses have made, um, you know, that they made last year to, to think about how they go and drive it out now. So I think that, you know, it doesn't mean that people can't catch up, but um, it's still very early days, I think, for a lot of businesses who are thinking about how they do this okay thank you we get uh, okay we'll take one more question with uh, Tom if you can get around to the lady in the center there I picked the hardest seat for you to get to ah. <laughs> just bear with us a second we will have to make this a last question though I'm afraid thank you hi um, I'm Catherine from Ipsos um, it was a question about you mentioned a kind of lack of sustainability skills um, and I just wanted to ask how you think you said that an ability to drive change is a really important thing for for businesses um, how do you think individuals can can grow those skills yeah so uh, sustainability as we know is a hugely wide topic so um, whether or not there's people who want to go and really focus into the environmental bit or the carbon bit or go to uni. We know that people coming out of uni now with, with those degrees get snapped up straight into really exciting. They get poached very quickly to go other places. So there's the whole piece around how do you know, is that, is that a career I want to do? But you're right, there's, we all have the opportunity across our, our jobs, our roles, our careers to think about how we can start embedding it. And it's one of the areas at Microsoft that we think about um, a enabling everybody to think about the impact that they're having and what they can be doing um, across their, their, you know, their day to day in terms of either influencing or practical things that they can be working um, with customers or internally on. So it's just thinking about <clears throat> the impact uh, that your role can have and you know if it's a role that isn't isn't aligned to that there's so many opportunities to think about moving into um, industries areas that are, are, are asking and demanding it with those transferable skills uh, which can be applied to you know focusing into the into the climate crisis and, and working out solving some of these really big pro problems that we need help with so I think everybody has got the opportunity uh, and we are desperate for really really smart people to come and, and help there you go, you heard it there, folks. Microsoft desperate for smart people to come and work with them. Uh, thank you very much, Muzzy. Brilliant session. Thank you. Thank you.